Hey everybody, Professor Snart checking in on a Monday morning, which has been lived up to its name so far. I managed to forget half my stuff at home, realized that I needed to get it once I got here at work. Returned home, came back, Blackboard has been all over the place. I've discovered that um, all kinds of content like video and PowerPoint types of things have just disappeared from uh, Blackboard, although not all of that material, so clearly some things are showing up. So it's been a bit of an adventure this morning. Um, we are then just uh, finishing up here units four and five and looking at a quick turnaround to six uh, and then our first essay assignment. So the before I get into that, the first thing is if you do notice pieces of our course that are just clearly missing, uh, obviously let me know. And I will, um, I don't know if it's a Blackboard glitch, if <clears throat> sometimes streaming services like YouTube or other things I use will um, change the way that they code material um, and what used to work doesn't and things need to be updated so it's a bit of a a bit of a hassle to say the least um, and it certainly helps me if you know if you find something that just doesn't make sense or there's you know a title for a video but no video there um, by all means let me know because uh, it's hard for me to, to go through every single piece of our course and find, you know, all that stuff. Okay, so um, we are uh, actually into the midterm week of our five-week course, which is hard to believe, although we have covered, you know, quite a bit of ground if you look at our unit so far. Um, although, again, a lot of it, as you'll notice, has been scaffolding stuff. So sort of one note about grading so far is that um, most of the grade has fallen either in you know relatively straightforward quizzes where answers are more or less right or wrong um, or discussion board things and again in discussion boards as is explained in the grading guidelines I'm really just looking for a basic kind of level of engagement in terms of your original posts but also your replies to others so there's not a lot of feedback that you get beyond the grade itself because really the grade probably indicates whether you fulfilled the assignment or didn't. And remember that I'm not grading on, like I would for an essay, on basic things like mechanics, um, citation, you know, things, uh, any of that kind of, you know, more essay-based stuff. Um, obviously, if there are grammatical problems that are that are so bad, or so many typos, that the work just looks rushed, or, you know, that, that those kinds of things get in the way of of the meaning that you're trying to communicate, then obviously they do play a role. But otherwise, if you're really sort of engaged with the work, then you're probably getting an A on that. The other thing to think about in terms of um, just how you sort of frame in your own mind grades so far is um, remember our course is out of a thousand points. So even if we do a discussion board out of 50, which is probably the biggest assignment we've had so far, that's still a pretty small piece of that thousand points. So if you're getting, you know, 50, 45, 40, don't then convert that in your mind into a percent and then a letter grade, which I think we're sort of trained to do a little bit. Um, <clears throat> just think of it in terms of those points. So the difference between, let's say, a 40 and a 45, it might seem like, oh, an A versus a B, but really it's five points within an overall thousand. So you kind of have to take uh, the, that relative measure into account when you're thinking about those grades. Not that those points aren't important necessarily, but you really need to keep them in perspective, I guess. Um, and the other, the other sort of piece of that, I guess, is um, to look at the major essay grading. So again, the biggest assignment we've done is a 50-point grade book, or a, a 50-point um, discussion board. But here you can see that the essays is obviously where the bulk of our points is going to come from, um, which makes sense. I mean, that's where really you're bringing together all of those smaller sort of scaffolding things that we've been doing, um, and where you'll get feedback on basic kind of grammar things if those are problematic, organizational things, you know, the big picture type of stuff. Um, and it's worth noting here because we now get into units that will focus on the sort of quote-unquote research aspect of our course is that 1102 is um, kind of uh, uh, 
informally refer to as the research class. So we happen to do essays and research about literary works, but the same basic, you know, structure framework will apply regardless of what sort of content you cover in an English 1102 class. There's still going to be a heavy focus on MLA citation, uh, both in text and the work cited part, doing research effectively, integrating that effectively into your essay. So it's really important to be aware now that that kind of aspect of our course, and of course that aspect of your essay, is really the first and really the most important thing that I look at. Um, again, not because it is in all writing situations the most important thing that you're doing, but because for our purposes, what you need to show me as the instructor in terms of me reading an essay and looking at that as an assessment device is that you get the basic concepts that we have to cover in English 1102 and can then you know apply them in that assessment or that writing situation. So it's really important, important to be cognizant of us in this 1102 class and how heavily this piece of it, right, the research piece, figures into it all. Okay, so that actually takes us into Unit 6, Locating Secondary Sources. And again, this is kind of building us up towards that um, the first essay that we're going to write. So you'll find a little midterm survey in here, um, just your opportunity to kind of give them some feedback. It's anonymous, so if you do have individual questions, um, obviously you need to let me know about that, you know, just directly through email, um, since I won't know who said what in the, the survey. Again, my goals for the course kind of generally in the online format is to make it structurally just easy to navigate so you can always coordinate due dates with what is actually due um, and also to build a kind of community or presence for me with you um, and also you with other classmates so hopefully those two things are kind of uh, emerging as we make our make our way further into the class so a couple of new readings to do from our book uh, keep in mind that as we get into these you may not have a lot of ideas immediately about like uh, themes or symbolism or all that kind of stuff, but don't worry. Part of that is what comes out through the writing process, through doing research, and all of that kind of stuff. So if you read a, a story like Araby and don't have really any idea of beyond the plot, sort of like what's the importance of this story, that's actually okay. You don't need to have it completely figured out the very first time you read it. So don't get sort of freaked out if, uh, if that does happen. So the assignment here for Unit 6 is very straightforward and the writing component on your end of it is very minimal. Um, basically a kind of, uh, so you're using the COD databases to find a secondary source or a critical source or commentary it's sometimes called. Um, it's all explained here so I won't reiterate everything but read this carefully. And um, you're really just telling us what the source was, if there was an article, was there a title, what database did it come from. Name the author if there was one. Sometimes there's not an author named. You can just let us know that there was no author clearly named. Um, and then a summary of the article. And you don't need to go into great depth trying to figure out what the argument was. Really just give us kind of like a, a sense of did it talk about themes, plot, character, some of that, all of that, none of that. It'll probably be most of that, honestly. Um, so you don't need to like try to pick apart the argument and and uh, figure out like other ways to approach the story. It doesn't need to be quite that involved, to be perfectly honest. The fact is, you're really not doing much in terms of writing for this unit, but this is a, a, exactly the kind of material, this like research aspect of it that will figure so centrally in the essays, which again, as we just saw, is really where the major kind of grading or point value for the course is. So easy to do this. I mean, if it takes you 20 minutes, I'd be surprised. Um, it's fairly simple to navigate here. But, right, it's really, really important. So don't let the, the, the ease of the assignment kind of mislead you into thinking that it's not really that important in the overall scheme of things. Um, there's also material on, obviously, integrating sources into your writing, so it's one thing to find them. How do you then build them in effectively, both in terms of integration, like, right, 
either introducing them or kind of running them as your own sentence, but also citing them correctly. Um, and again, you don't really memorize this stuff so much. I mean, I guess you do, but uh, there's, it's not something that you just sort of, sort of figure out. You follow the models, and then after you follow the models a few times, you get used to it, so you sort of do memorize it, but you don't figure it out on your own. You just, you know, follow the models and then get into the habit of doing it. Um, so let me jump forward then to unit, actually unit, what we'll call for our five-week format here, seven and eight, but really just essay one. So the first thing, <clears throat> pardon me, I'm having you do is look through a whole series of sample essays. So um, I really want you to feel like kind of immersed in the kind of essay that we're writing for the class. You may notice certain problems with these essays, like they, they don't conform to certain formatting that we have for our course, or they don't seem to use MLA citation correctly, or whatever. Um, but beyond those very specific differences maybe, generally speaking, all of these essays will have the tone, the approach, the scope, the kind of feel and sound of the essay that you're writing now for the class. So it's really good to get not just a little sample of that kind of essay, but to really feel like you're immersed in that kind of writing before you start your own writing. There's uh, yet another MLA research citation point or, or uh, component here. Again, and these are some of the videos I had to rebuild, basically, so uh, a real pain in the neck, but hopefully they show up correctly <laughs> for longer than just a couple of weeks. Um, but again, just really pay attention to this stuff because it's easy to gloss it over and go right to that essay assignment, but when it comes to grading time, um, I open up your essay file and I actually scroll right to the end and look at that work cited. Um, obviously, I read the essay, but if there's serious problems with the work cited, that's a pretty good clue to me that you haven't really paid attention to, well, the class, right? And you're not getting the concepts and then applying them in the assessment. So, you know, it's a pretty good indicator right up front for me what's going on. And then, of course, <clears throat> the assignment itself. <clears throat> Basically, oh, Here's one of those videos that disappeared. Oy. Hopefully this is the kind of essay that you've written before. Even if it's not, hopefully you really get a sense of what we're doing here um, based on you know the, the sample essays that we're looking at. But you'll notice that it's very short. It's three to four pages. You're analyzing one of these aspects within a short story we've read and then incorporating at least one secondary source throughout the essay. So I can't um, reiterate enough that I look for, did you get a secondary source? Is it the right kind? It's not just from the web, it's from the databases. It's cited correctly, so you've followed the examples. And you've built your work cited page correctly. And, <clears throat> excuse me, not that you've had to figure any of this out as some sort of mysterious thing, but it's all, I hope, laid out for you right here in our course in terms of examples and models to follow. So the other thing to note then, as I uh, wrap this up, is just where we're at in, as far as due dates go. We have moved really quickly through our course, sometimes doubling up on days. Uh, here we are in unit six, quick uh, due date turnaround. Um, but notice that you have a substantial amount of time, um, like years it might feel like, to write this essay. So from Monday all the way through to Friday, which is a huge span of time in our five week format. Um, so again, that reflects now we have a fairly major uh, assignment in terms of the point value. Um, and I'm looking for that real investment and kind of bringing together of a lot of what we covered uh, so far in the course. So you have the opportunity, obviously, to review some of the units and go back and look at things, to be in touch with me about your essay idea, um, if you have questions about the source you found, about anything else. Um, so the, the essays that were done really like the night before and just kind of cobbled together, um, truth be told, you know, you know what those look like and well, I know what those look like too. So let's try to avoid that situation. But by all means, um, be in touch with me, especially if you see those videos that are clearly just missing, right? Um, and of course, any essay questions, let me know right up front and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.